Espresso machines look cool, and they have a knack for making delicious liquid out of roasted seeds. But what exactly is in that chrome box? They're simpler than you might think, and only a few of the parts in there have a big impact on the experience when you're using the machine. In our first episode of this series, we covered boilers and PIDs, arguably the two most important parts of an espresso machine. In this video, we'll be covering the other two key pieces of the puzzle, namely pumps and water supply methods. Let's start with pumps. In order to create espresso, you need pressure, traditionally about nine bars of pressure. To generate this pressure and move water into contact with our puck of grounds, we use a pump. There are two main types of pumps that cover almost all espresso machines, vibratory pumps and rotary pumps. Vibratory pumps use a spring and piston design that implements electromagnetism to, as the name suggests, vibrate and move water and create pressure. They have a bunch of benefits. They're relatively cheap, very small, easily produce nine bars of pressure, and have a lifetime of around five years in most espresso machines. They don't last forever, but they're easy enough to replace yourself. The main drawback is that they produce a good bit of noise. That said, certain brands like ECM and Provotec do a great job of mounting their vibratory pumps, making them relatively quiet. If you're set on getting something that's nearly silent, you'll want to go with the second option, rotary pumps. These use a large motor to rotate a gear-like mechanism, which generates pressure. In addition to being very quiet, they can also last a lifetime. Rotary pumps are one of the most reliable parts of any espresso machine. They're also capable of pulling water from either an internal reservoir or a direct water line, something vibratory pumps can't do. The only drawbacks is that they're quite a bit larger than vibratory pumps, and they also cost quite a bit more. And this leads us to our second topic, water supply. You can't make coffee without water. How it gets to your machine is up to your preferences and your specific kitchen setup. If you have a direct water line you'd like to utilize, you should look for a direct plumb machine. If not, get a machine with an internal water reservoir. You'll find that many less expensive machines have vibratory pumps and run on an internal reservoir only. The key consideration with reservoir machines is access. Most of them will have access only from the top back of the machine. If you plan to place your machine under a cabinet, you'll likely need to look for a machine with a front-loading reservoir, like the Luca A53 Mini. Alternatively, you can direct plumb your machine. We offer a filtration and softening kit that takes care of everything between your water outlet and the machine, so setup is quite simple. For many, not having to refill a reservoir can be a huge perk, particularly if you aim to pull plenty of shots. The other perk is true pre-infusion, which uses line pressure to slowly saturate the puck of coffee before applying full pressure with the pump. Most direct plumb machines also have an internal reservoir and allow you to easily switch between the two. Once you've figured out what boiler arrangement, pump, and water supply you want, you should be down to just one or two espresso machines. From there, it's all about what gets you most excited to start your career as a home barista. If this video helped you get one step closer to picking the right espresso machine, be sure to hit the like button. If you have any other questions, I'd be glad to field them in the comments below. And for more machine overviews and coffee knowledge, tamp subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.